everybody, Christian here and today we're taking a look at the Zima Blade, another small single board computer made by Ice Whale, I think the same guys who already brought us the Zima board, a device that I've used extensively in some of my home lab projects. And yeah, this device is pretty cool for various types of tinkering adventures in a home lab, such as building a small and efficient home server or a NAS device. But uh, when I first got my hands on this, I couldn't help but ask myself a few questions. So who is this really made for? Is it going to be a replacement for my old Zima board or is it a totally different device that could be interesting for future projects? Let's discuss some of those options together and let's find out how it competes in terms of CPU performance and power consumption to similar devices like the Raspberry Pi 5. And just to let you know, Icewell provided me this here for free but they didn't pay me to make this video so, so you're getting my honest and humble opinion. As always, <laughs> let's get started. All right, so let's dive into the tech specs of the Zima Blade. The Zima Blade comes in two different versions, one with a dual core CPU and another one with a quad core CPU. This is actually the one that I've been testing in this review. And both models feature the same Intel CPU generation that was already used in the Zima board. So just like the Zima board, the Zima Blade also has an x86 architecture of Intel CPUs, which is in my opinion, a pretty compelling reason to consider this over a Raspberry Pi because it allows you to run some workloads and some operating systems that are not supported on ARM. However, the Intel Celeron Apollo-like CPU generation that is used in both of the Zima Blade models is already quite outdated. I mean, it launched back in 2016, which was likely done to keep the cost low, but for sure it's not going to impress anyone. We will, by the way, later see how that affects the CPU performance and also the power efficiency in some of the tests. Nevertheless, one cool improvement of the Zima Blade over the Zima board is the SODIMM memory slot that is compatible with 16 GB of DDR3 memory. It is a bit odd since the Zima board already had DDR4 and now we are getting DDR3, which is an older generation of RAM, but at least you can now upgrade the memory, which is a plus. It also has an integrated 32 GB eMMC storage, which I guess gets the job done, but yeah, nothing special. For network connectivity, there's one gigabit ethernet port, which is another downgrade from the dual network ports on the Zima board, making the Zima blade less suitable as a router or firewall device. But I think for a home server or a NAS device, I mean, one network port is totally sufficient. Additionally, it also supports a 4K resolution over the display port, but let's be realistic, you won't be gaming on this thing here. It's just enough to render a basic desktop wallpaper in 4K. <laughs> One nice feature of the Zima Blade though is the PCIe slot, which is PCIe 2.0 with four lanes. That was already a cool thing to have on the Zima board, although I personally never needed it, but it could be nice to test additional PCIe cards that increase the number of hard drives you can connect to this little thing, or, or maybe a a second network card if you really need that second network interface. There are also two SATA 3.0 ports for adding some hard drives. This becomes particularly interesting for some project ideas I'll discuss with you later. And also not to forget the Zima Blade includes one USB 3 port and a USB type C port which is now used for both power with a 36 watts USB C power adapter and for display or data connections as well. What's a bit stupid because if you want to connect a USB keyboard and a USB drive to install the operating system at the same time, you will need a USB adapter. But well, yeah, that's me just nitpicking here. Still, I have to say, I'm a bit disappointed by these specs, mainly because of the outdated hardware. Sure, you're not expecting all the latest and greatest chips from a small and cheap device like this here, but Come on, DDR3 and Apollo Lake in 2024. I mean, I've seen other devices that are more up to date. And if you already have a Zima board, just like me, I think there's really no reason why you would want to replace it with a Zima blade. In some aspects, it's actually a downgrade. So the question is still valid. So who is this really made for? That being said, I love the design of the Zima Blade. It really looks nice and cool. And if you don't have a similar device already, so you're looking for a small and cheap x86 uh, single board computer that is also power efficient, this might be the right fit for you. 
But let's also explore some interesting project ideas I've got for you if you're aiming to buy the Zima Blade. So first up, running it as a small home server. With its efficient design, the Zima Blade is perfect for a 24-7 home server setup. For instance, you can deploy some containers like Home Assistant to control your smart home devices or set up a DNS server like PyHall or Bind9. The Zima Blade is ideal for smaller tests like this, where you just want to run a few services that don't require intensive computing and you don't like to worry about high energy cost. So that's where the Zima Blade might be a good fit, just like the Zima board already was. The second idea I had is to use multiple of those Zima Blades here and form a Kubernetes cluster for running some containerized workloads at larger scale in my home lab. So you might have seen some people already doing this with Raspberry Pis, but in theory, you could of course also use some Zima Blades for this. By the way, if you're interested in that idea, watch the video until the end because I also compare some of the metrics like the CPU benchmark and also the power usage of the Zima Blade to a Raspberry Pi 5. Simply because I want to build such a Kubernetes cluster in the next weeks and part of that researching was to find out so whether the Zima Blade or the Raspberry Pi might be the right device for building a cluster. So there's something interesting coming up soon. And the third idea, and I think this is probably the much more interesting one for the Zima Blade, is to use it as a do-it-yourself NAS device. Because Ice Whale also sent me this pretty cool HDD frame that you get included in the Zima Blade 7700 NAS kit. And this allows you to mount two hard drives and connect it to the SATA ports of the Zima Blade with those included adapters here. And that's what I've done with my Zima Blade for testing. And I believe this setup offers a great cost-effective alternative to some pre-built NAS devices. So so those are all the valid use cases for the Zima Blade that I could think of. Now if you're looking for using the Zima Blade as a NAS device, we of course also need to talk about the software. And yeah, just like the Zima board, the Zima Blade ships with Casa OS, which is Icewheel's own Linux system based on Debian. On the website, they call it your personal cloud OS, which is heavily focused on the Docker ecosystem. It's basically a nice and clean dashboard for viewing some basic stats of your device and an app store that will deploy Docker containers us in an easy and simple way. In the past, I haven't really talked much about Casa OS on this channel before, mainly because I'm honestly not a huge fan of it. I, I mean, it's a promising concept, but it definitely lacks some several key features that other systems provide, such as proper RAID functionality, which is crucial for a NAS setup. I know that Icewell is also working on a new project that is called Zima OS, which aims to address some of the problems of Casa OS and brings you some new features like the RAID functionality in a newly branded system. But the truth is, it feels a bit lazy because the underlying RAID implementation is based on a pretty outdated technology called MDADM on Linux. My personal opinion, neither Casa OS nor Zima OS feel like a mature system for redundant file storage today. That doesn't mean that it won't get there for sure, but I'd give it at least one year or two to see whether this is evolving as a true competitor to other open source storage server systems, something like TrueNAS or Unraid. Long story short, I personally would recommend installing a different operating system on this thing, especially if you want to use it as a NAS. My tip, consider running TrueNAS or even a Linux distro like Ubuntu. For my performance testing, I installed Ubuntu Linux for servers. This is my go-to Linux distro, as you all should know, and it works just perfectly on the Zima Blade as well. The installation procedure was also very straightforward. I just used a bootable USB drive, used a USB adapter, and installed the operating system, then booted from it, just like you would do it on a, any other computer, and then you're ready to go. Once I had set up and installed everything, of course I wanted to test the performance and power efficiency of the Zima Blade as well, which kind of met my expectations in several areas, but also fell short in others. First thing I have to say, the power usage is as low as I expected. When it's on idle, the Zima Blade consumes around 5.1 watts, which is very similar to the Zima board. And that wasn't a big surprise due to its similar architecture. When you run a stress test on it, it went up to 11.3 watts, but this is also totally in range of the expected power usage. However, even though the power usage itself might be pretty low, the power efficiency of the Zima Blade is a totally different thing. So the amount of computing work that the Zima Blade can actually process in relation to the actual power consumption. And that's an interesting metric when you want to compare it to any other systems like the Raspberry Pi, for example. 
To measure the system performance, I ran Geekbench, the benchmark utility I already used for the review of the Mini Forum ITX mainboard. With the Zima Blade, I was able to get a score of 274 for the single core test and a score of 820 for the multi core test. Which is not the best result, to be honest. However, that also wasn't a big surprise because, as I said in the beginning, the Intel CPU on the Zima Blade is pretty outdated. You also have the feeling that this device here is sometimes kind of sluggish. Uh, especially when you're running more than one process at the same time. I mean, it's not worse than on a Zima board, just to be clear. And sure, this is an entry-level device that is not that expensive, so it's always a matter of expectations here. But if you compare this to a Raspberry Pi 5, for example, that got released somewhere around the same time and it has a similar price tag, the Zima Blade is definitely falling behind because the Raspberry Pi 5 has a much higher single core and multi-core benchmark score with a similar power consumption. So in the end, if you just think about what performance you get relative to the power consumption, the Zima Blade isn't that great of a deal. But to be fair, it is totally sufficient for simple day-to-day -day workloads, some experimental stuff or using it as a home server then the Zima Blade is a cool tiny device. I even had a good experience with using it as a NAS. So for this test, I connected the Zima Blade with the included adapter and the hard drive frame to two 4 terabyte Western Digital RAID drives, installed OpenZFS on the Ubuntu Linux distro and configured a mirrored ZFS pool for redundancy. ZFS is by the way also the same file system that TrueNAS is running, so I think this makes the test pretty accurate to real world conditions. So when you consider using this as a NAS, and it also was a good exercise in refreshing my terminal skills for setting up ZFS pool over the command line. Sometimes you just have to do some of this stuff to not lose practice. <laughs> Copying a large dummy file from one of my servers to the Zima Blade averaged around 100 to 110 megabytes per second reading and writing speed, which is pretty standard for a 1 gigabit network NAS device with spinning drives. And it also proves that the Zima Blade with the NAS kit is absolutely sufficient for using it as a simple NAS solution. The power consumption went up a little for testing this and it averaged around 13.1 watts. Also nothing surprising because the two hard drives that I connected of course also consume power. I honestly don't know how this stands against other NAS systems like QNAP or Synology though, but I think it would be pretty similar. And not to forget the advantage of the Zima Blade as a NAS is you have all the freedom to install any operating system that you like and you could also use it for any other experimental stuff later. So as a conclusion, there is definitely a good use case for the Zima Blade. Of course, you won't get the latest and greatest hardware and performance though, so that should be clear from all the tests that I've ran. But maybe that's not what you're looking for. Maybe you just want an easy to use, small and cost effective device that you want to use as a small home server on NAS, so that the Zima Blade might be the right fit for you to get into home lab tinkering. However, if you already have a Zima board or a similar device, then there is, in my opinion, no compelling reason to switch or upgrade to a Zima Blade. And for building my Kubernetes cluster, I still prefer the Raspberry Pi 5 because it offers a better performance to power consumption value. So to answer the question from the beginning, no, the Zima Blade is not the better Raspberry Pi, but it might be an interesting alternative in some specific scenarios like a NAS with a cool case and a cool design. But now it's your turn, so what do you think? Please let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. A big shout out to all of my Patreon supporters for making all these tutorials and reviews possible. And of course, I will catch you in the next video. Take care everyone, bye bye.